Anything could happen. I think we need to take a little bit of a deep breath and go to Gillian in North Wales and hopefully it's a bit calmer there, Gillian. <laughs> it is calmer, but we still have quite a lot of drama here as well. We are back for a second night at Gwaith Powder. It is a North Wales Wildlife Trust nature reserve. And looking around me, it's really hard to imagine, but this landscape was once scarred and barren. This used to be the site of an explosives factory, but now nature is reclaiming it back. And there's one little bird species that makes its way all the way from a little corner in West Africa to come and breed here. And this is it. It's the pied fly catcher an absolutely stunning bird this is the male looking really smart there with those white wing panels really beautiful birds they also have the little what I call the headlight that white patch just above the beak there and this is the female same markings minus the headlight as I call it a little dustier as well so not quite as crisp but you can see there she had something in her beak there that's the name the fly catcher now these birds migrate all the way from Africa, from West Africa, they make an enormous journey, which includes spanning and flying right over the Sahara Desert, which they do in one non-stop flight in around 38 hours, it's thought. So that, I think, is absolutely remarkable for a bird that's about 12 centimeters, 12 grams. It weighs about the size of a large strawberry, so pretty amazing. Now, our wildlife camera operator, Steve Phillips, has been spending the last few days here, and he's been treated to some real interesting behavior. So let's start first with the female. Let's take a look at that dusty brown female again. Now, you can see her here. This is why they call fly catchers. She's not just got a fly, she's got a damsel fly. This female proved to be a real damsel huntress. Now, we didn't see her just catch one of these. We saw her catching these time and time again. Now, bear in mind, she's plucking these damselflies from midair, and this is her returning to the perch after each flight. And then, after taking stock, returning to her nest box, you can just about make out the number there, number 14. And she deposits it in, in less than a minute, she's out to do it all again. Now, I said, this is quite a feat, catching insects in flight, but what is even more impressive is catching damselflies in flight. Now, damselflies, along with dragonflies, are some of the most amazing aerial predators in the whole animal kingdom. Around here, the damselflies are doing really well. This is a large red damselfly. There's lots of ponds and water bodies, but it's an opportunity to see those wings. They have two pairs of uniform wings that they can beat more or less independently, which allows them to fly forward. It allows them to fly backwards. It means they can turn in mid-flight. They're really amazing. So for that female to be able to pluck those out of the air is really, really impressive. But it was not the only thing she proved to be good at. Now, there was a lot more going on at number 14 than any of us were bargaining for. So this is her mate, this is the male. Now, if we take a really close look, you see that patch there above the beak. I like to think of it like the headlights. It's a really nice feature because it allows you to distinguish the individual. His is bright, it's big, it's bold. It even has a little flick there. Now, this is another male. And this was a male visiting the same nest box. Now his little headlamp there above the beak is not as crisp, it's a bit smaller, it's a bit faded, it's a bit messy. And those little white patches are what the females are looking for in terms of attractiveness in a mate. Somehow though, she seemed to have mated with both of these males and we saw them coming out. She obviously asked them to take the rubbish out. This is mate number one taking a fecal sac out of that nest box but both males seem to be going in and out of that same nest box number 14. now it's possible that the clutch that she has in there the chicks are just mated from one of the males she might have two clutches there chicks from both males but unfortunately this is a case of who's the daddy nobody knows so both males continue to provision and help that female raise those chicks because they may have skin in the game there may be genes there that they want to make sure make it to fledging so it's an absolutely amazing story not all pied flycatchers do this most of them are monogamous but it's really interesting to see this behavior here and it may be playing out in other parts of their range in the country in wales and the west of england